गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर गोपाल कृष्ण एमगांवकर असोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड एचओ डी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स गवर्नमेंट प्रेसकर कॉलेज थैंक यू नीरो वुड बी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट वेलफेयर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कोर्स द कॉल्डर हिक्स कंपनसेशन क्राइटेरिया दिस इज द टू स्टॉलवर्ट इकोनॉमिक्स दे टुगेदर यू नो गिव दिस पर्टिकुलर थ्योरी आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शंस हाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर थ्योरी इमर्जड एंड Uh, what are this concepts and everything today uh, they accepting pareto's ordinal measurement of utility and the impossibility of its interpersonal comparisons hicks and calder and even sesetkovsky try to show that social welfare could be increased without making value judgments they have made efforts to evaluate the changes in social welfare resulting from any economic reorganizations which harm somebody and uh, benefits the others they have put forward a criterion known as the compensation principle on the basis of which they claim to evaluate those changes in economic policy or organization which makes some individual better off and others worse off the compensation criteria also known as the new welfare economics what they are going to say is whenever any type of economic activities uh, take place definitely there will be somebody is to better off but uh, uh, on other end there is a chance of somebody is to worse up to so what this theory is going to say is uh, how to balance this worse up better up means is improved and somebody is going to you know their position is you know little bit uh, come down in such case the compensating principle will help you to compensate the conditions to make it conditions so this is what the main uh, principle of this particular uh, calder hicks compensation principle uh, the compensation principle is based on certain very important assumptions i would like to bring forth these particular assumptions in the beginning and then we will come to the explanations the suspicion of an individual is independent of the others and he is the best judge of his welfare this is what one thing you should remember because satisfaction of an individual is independent of others because nobody is going to compare with uh, anybody because everybody have their own ideas and their satisfaction level and so he knows how to uh, judge his uh, welfare also there exists no externalities of consumption and production third one the tastes of individuals remain constant this is always they are going to assume because it's one of the important thing for every theory also uh, the consumption theories the problems of production and exchange can be separated from the problems of distribution compensating principle accepts the level of social welfare to be a function of the level of production thus it ignores the effects of a change in distribution on social welfare utility can be measured ordinarily and interpersonal comparisons of utilities are not possible this is for the thing that you know how to there are two three ways of measuring the utility here it is ordinarily they can be able to measure so uh, i will come to the explanations of this theory according to calder the test of increase in social welfare is that of is that if some people are made better off and others worse off the gainers from the change could more than compensate the losers and yet be better off themselves the actual payment of compensation is regarded as political or ethical decisions yes for the calder what happens there will be gainers and losers but if the gaining is more than the losing in the sense if the gainers gain lot and they can compensate to the losers so that even then there is a chance of better off this is the thing that he is going to say calder does not not require that losers should be should actually be compensated rather he requires that the gainers should be able to potentially to con- compensate the losers out of their gains hicks presents the same criteria in a little different way of course after calder hicks also compared with him he says if a is made so much better off by the change that he could compensate b for his loss and still have something left over then the reorganization is a new equal improvement i will read again for this uh, for your understanding if a is made so much better off so much better off by the change that he could compensate b for his loss okay a b is experiencing loss then a is to compensate because he, a is earned his better and still have something left over 
uh, then the reorganization unequal and improvement that means if the uh, even after the compensating if there is something left over then that is called as improvement thus the calder dix criteria implies that if an economic change leads to the production of more goods and services they can be so distributed as to make some some people better off and none worse off uh, actual distribution being a political or ethical issue need not take place it is enough that reorganize create such conditions that redistribution can be effected this is for the uh, very important you know um, statement they made uh, so this particular criterion uh, criterion can be explained with the help of diagram and some examples this criterion is listed with the help of utility possibility curve that you are going to use here utility possibility curve for two individuals if a and b are two individuals just for example if they are a and b are two individuals each utility possibility curve represents the locus of all combination of their utility levels if you want to have a utility production sorry utility possibility curves that utility possibility curve is if a and b two individuals are each utility possibility curve represents the locus of all combination of their utility levels because there is a different uh, individual uh, utility curves that is going to represent different levels of their utility each curve is related to a given fixes and bundle of goods and and the various points on each curve are obtained by costless lump sum redistribution of fixed community bundle bundle uh, of course this diagram i am going to explain here with the uh, example let here uh, a x and y be the two bundles of goods x and y be the two bundles of goods, represented by the utility possibility curve here it is b1 a1 b2 a2 please see that respective as utility possibility shown in the below diagram of course this diagram particularly starting from a given bundle of goods represented by q2 in terms of the parity and curtain any change which leads to a movement to any one of the point c d and e is a parity improvement on the b1 a1 curve because it makes both individuals better off or at least one better off without making the other uh, other worse off this is for the uh, parity and idea but any movement outside c and e any movement from uh, outside c and e c and e is are then mentioned there uh, to q1 cannot be evaluated the parity and parity for the reason that it improves a's welfare at the ex expense of b's nevertheless a move from q2 to q1 can be evaluated in terms of called x criterion remember that in the uh, the uh, parity and parity uh, analysis you can't able to evaluate after c and e but in in respect of uh, this uh, calders and hicks they it can be measured this can be done by asking b how much he would be willing to pay a to prevent this move and, and second asking uh, second one a how much he would be willing to pay to b to follow it so you have to inquire both of them if second one is greater than first one the change increase well for this reason that a would be potentially compensate b for his loss and still be better off at q1 than q2 so this is the things that you have to remember here a simple test for the improvement of welfare according to the calder hicks criteria is that the initial bundle the initial initial bundle uh, lie below the utility possibility curve representing the new bundle thus a move from q2 to q1 uh, satisfy the called hicks criterion for the present for the reason that q2 lies below the utility uh, possibility curve b1 a1 of the final bundle q1 to present in different way or differently a move to q1 can be contemplated to generate the point d on the same utility possibility curve b1 a1 which is unambiguously better than q2 after comp compensation one can move from d to d to q1 so this is the way in which he is going to explain the criterion for a calder hicks utility idea i have given the explanations here also you can refer that because uh, uh, you should not uh, you know 
we panic about that. This is not the below diagram, it is above diagram because diagram is not there. You know, you go, yeah, above diagram. So, see that above diagram here. Yeah. And uh, explanation is already made how this, uh, you know, shift from uh, one to another that happens. And it is very clear here it is if A is greater than, uh, sorry, if second one is greater than first one, the change increase developer for the reasons that A would be potentially compensated B for his loss and still be better off at Q1 than at Q2. So, if this is the position, then they will go to the definitely without any uh, hesitations to welfare. So, criticisms, of course, uh, every time there are some criticisms against some every theory, so here also there is criticisms. Uh, ignores income distributions. They are ignoring the income distribution. The Calderix compensation principle, according to Dr. Little, is merely a definition, not a test of increase in welfare for the reason that it ignores income distribution. In fact, the problem of distribution cannot be ignored where the problem of productive efficiency is involved. To say that one bundle of goods is greater than the orders is meaningless without reference to income distribution or any comparison between two bundles of goods involves their money value at their market prices. No universal validity. Second one, Sisichkovsky has criticized Calder for the view that the state is fully responsible for the maintaining an equitable distribution of income. If there is unequal income distribution in the community, it is corrected as a matter of course by state through a system of compensation. Next one, according to Sisitsky, of course, he is going to modify that one to some extent. I will come back to that one a little bit later in the next, next slides. Next slide in the next uh, uh, teaching, there you will find uh, the Sisitskovsky too. Uh, according to Sisitskovsky, this is like to be a case in a socialistic economy. But in a pre enterprise economy, the effects of a certain economic reorganization on efficiency and equity cannot be separated for the reason that compensation payments are not feasible politically. Thus, the Calder Higgs criterion has no universal validity according to Sisitkovsky. He is uh, having that particular opinion. Finally, the fourth one, Calder Higgs have claimed that through compensation principle, they have been able to separate production chain from distribution chain by which it is accompanied. For instance, as a result of policy chain output, Coca-Cola increase under Sisitkovsky decreases. So, anyhow, these are the uh, different type of opinions of criticism in the sense there are positives and negatives uh, regarding this particular theory um, and uh, uh, definitely there is some improvements uh, uh, our peritoneal uh, you know optimality uh, this is the new areas of welfare economics and uh, Calder and Hicks and of course Sisitkovsky I will come back to Sisitkovsky after this one are uh, done their own works so students please refer these things uh, carefully and uh, there may be questions on this particular chapter too, I mean chapter in the sense title too. So be ready for to answer. Uh, if you have any doubts you may contact me and I refer this one uh, to the even internet sources also and some advanced like on theory of emerging and ohja. So you can also refer with this, uh, you know, I, I conclude this uh, uh, Calder Hicks analysis. I will come back with the Sistkovsky, uh, wait for that. Uh, uh, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for the hearing, thank you.